Hey everyone, David here with an exciting new review. I know it's been a while since I've done a figure review, but I saw this on Big Bag Toy Store, and for the price and for what it was, I thought, you know what, I gotta get this. I missed on the original Megazord that was released some time ago that I was seeing at Toy Store um, a numer numerous amount of times, but I always thought it was just a little too costly. It's basically the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Super Mini Pla, I think it's called, Mini Pla, Super Mini Pla Megazord. And so basically it's pretty much identical to that figure that was released by, I want to say, Mattel? I think it, it I, I can't remember. It, obviously it's from Bandai, but I think Mattel was the distributor here in America of that original Megazord that was like a hundred and something dollars, like 120, 130, something like that. And it had all the original Megazords. And of course, right now there's actually a Japanese version going around. Unfortunately, that Japanese version ranges around 300 bucks and that's primarily because it's being imported and also it has die cast pieces in it and so i'm like nope i'm settling with this little bad boy now i just wanted to show off the box art real real quick nothing really special as you can see it's imported you got the megazord the little design right here of all the zords combined to form the megazord as well as your beloved mighty morphin power rangers right here along with this cool little coin here that shows all of the different animals on the bottom here i actually think it's kind of neat you got some japanese writing going on right there and another shot of the megazord but what's kind of cool is that they got that little badass look side profile to the uh rangers to make them seem much more badass and tough as nails than they originally were kind of how their marketing material was for the mighty morphin power rangers movie anyways on the side once again the zord right there and then you got all the little individual zords right there once again that little coin that i wish could have been thrown in as a, as a nice little collectible but oh well i'll make do with what i got as well as an image of the zord again japanese writing and then right here to show off a little added bonus is, once again, the Zord with the detachment of the actual sword that comes from the Mastodon as well as the Mastodon shield. And then over here, a different assortment of the swords where you got that little different uh, port... I don't want to say portable, but mobile mode where they're kind of like traversing over terrain almost like as a tank. I guess you could call it tank mode, but I digress. Funny enough though, all these cool nifty little Japanese design to the box, yet completely blank here on the back. So I thought that was kind of kind of funny because it kind of the box the actual way that the box is designed, it resembles that of a of a board game type of box. So I was like, okay, I was hoping something a little bit more collectible-ish. Here's the catch, however. I opened this bad boy already, and as I slid off the lid, I noticed a little something, something. The manual just fell out. But as you can see, you have to build this motherfucker. <laughs> I was not expecting this. This is my first figure from this company. Uh, not Bandai, but Mini Plast, Super Mini Plast, whatever it's called. That th This string of figures that they got going. And basically, not only do you are you able to own each individual Zord that will then transform to form either the Megazord or the tank mode or whatever the fuck, but you also have to build each individual little figure. I was not expecting that. And what's kind of cool is that rummaging through these little bags, they actually have each Zord separated by bags. So you got this one right here is the Mastodon. And then this one over here, I believe, is the pterodactyl, which is why he it's got uh, the smaller amount of pieces as opposed to the other bags. And they're also color-coded, but on top of that, you also got little sticker sheets right there to put on the individual pieces. So with the mystical magical power of the editing software that I use, let's go ahead and put these bad boys together and show off the individual zords leading up to the climactic showing of the Megazord. Stay tuned. Okay, that was a that was a handful. I was actually beginning to wonder if that was just Bandai's way to cut labor costs and have us build the damn thing. Jeez. <laughs> Anyways, here we have the Mini Pla Super Mini Pla Megazord, or at least the individual Zords controlled by the six different. Oh no, I'm sorry, five different Power Rangers. The original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and so they're a little bit larger. I mean, a lar a smaller in scale. Here's my hand, as you can see. They're not humongously small, you know, they're not like miniature figures, they're not like little tiny ditties, but 
uh, there is a, a slightly smaller scale when it comes to the other one that you're probably used to. So uh, they have to be in order to make up the Megazord that is advertised as being 6 inch. So they're going to come at a smaller scale. Now the only thing that kind of bugs me that you can kind of tell right from the get go is that some of these Zords are not exactly to scale to one another. Something got kind of lost in the translation. Uh, so... It, when it when you put them together to form the Megazord, they're gonna show off a little bit better later on in the review. But for now, when they're spread out, separated, not everyone's going to match. Like the three that I think are the closest to scale would probably be Sabertooth Tiger, Pterodactyl, and then maybe Triceratops. And then the two that kind of stick out like a sore thumb, primarily because of how tiny they are in comparison, is the T-Rex and the Mastodon. Most especially the Mastodon. As you can tell, Mastodon is super mini and tiny. And that just doesn't really flow very well when the Mastodon is this tiny and yet Sabertooth Tiger is like, you know, it's just, it doesn't really bode very well when it comes to scale. So if you're a very, uh, a very huge scale nut, then yes, that might prove to be a slight issue. But overall, it's still... Looks very well with each other. Considering how small and how separated all the pieces were apart and then putting them together, applying all the stickers, putting it all in the proper places, it's actually rather extraordinary that they were able to create such meticulous pieces separated from one another. And then so when bringing them together through the instructions, it's like, wow, you actually, you actually got little zords here. That's pretty nifty. So I'm going to show off the zords individually. I'm going to start from probably, I think, the smallest and easiest to just show in front of the camera to... The most detailed and meticulous one, I guess I'll start off with Pterodactyl. So here we have Pterodactyl, the Zord belonging to the Pink Ranger. And it's funny because she's not really that pink, she's red. It's, I think that's a little curious. The only pink is, is the little accents here that she ha that it has on the head. But overall, uh, it's a pretty simple design. There's really not much to it. I mean, especially with the scale that you're considering here where you have to make the, the little Zords as miniaturesque as possible. So you're mainly dealing with this. Uh, you can kind of see how the middle portion of the pterodactyl is already starting to form the chest for the Megazord. So not a whole lot of design choices there, but rotating around my biggest um, gr grimy spot with this little pterodactyl is that there's a humongous crevice here. And of course, you know, there's no choice because that's when that's where it's going to be assembling together to form the Megazord. So kind of comes with the territory but I just don't like it how it's the pterodactyl to me is the weakest zord in this little figure set because it's literally like what one two three maybe four five pieces five big pieces to form the little zord put together and then if you want to throw in these cannons which are actually optional I just put them there because the instructions say you could put them there for storage I like to consider these cannons that are that are will be much more handy in its megazord form as uh, the pterodactyl's uh, giant ass laser gunning feet. <laughs> That's what I like to consider it. But overall, it's not a bad little Zord. It's just definitely, to me personally, the weakest of them all. Uh, not only with design, but also with articulation. I mean, it can kind of flap the wings around like so. And you can also move the head backwards like about here. To kind of make it look like a swan. Just move the... Uh, wings upwards like so and that's primarily about it but really not much to the pterodactyl so again my least favorite of the zords but still essential to the team as they say next is the triceratops belonging to the blue ranger billy and in my opinion i even though he's not the weakest zord in this little figure set i always thought he's he was the weakest zord in, conceptually within the show because He's supposed to be the Triceratops, and yet he just looks like a block, a, a blue block with a Triceratops head. So I've never been a huge fan of this figure, uh, well, this Zord being part of the team uh, design-wise, because I'm just like, oh, dude, you're, you're a leg. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody else resembles more of their, their animal or their uh, creature or whatever it is, and yet you're just a blo blue block with a Triceratops head. And, and don't worry, you know, I pity for Billy. I pity for Billy, alright? He was the one that had the hardest uh, time on set because of his uh, sexuality. So, it's a shame that they gave him the the weakest Zord conceptually again. So, they took that and did the best that they could to represent it here in figure form. And so far, it does the job. Doesn't really do much in this form, to be honest, except maybe rotate the, the tail upwards like so. And then the head can move upwards like that, but doesn't really go 
far beyond that primarily because that's where the transformation to its other modes kind of come in Primar that's primarily it besides that he does have a set of wheels here at the bottom that you get assembled together and put them in there so he can roll on the surface somewhat decently but I honestly don't know what you're going to be doing with this so ladies and gentlemen the blue zord <laughs> sorry okay so now we got the mastodon which belonged to the black ranger which just happened to be a black man and there was no level of sensitivity back in the good old early 90s anyways this is the mastodon and it's funny because i was mentioning how at the beginning of the review these figures are not particularly to scale especially the mastodon because of how tiny he is compared to saber tooth tiger over here or even the t-rex but to be honest, when it comes to the design and the way that it's all kind of in a nice little compact package that Super Mini Play was able to do, Mastodon is my favorite. Because even though he doesn't really have much articulation, you can move the trunk slightly because it's on a ball joint. The tusks can kind of rotate outwards like that so you can position them differently. Although that would look really, really weird because it kind of makes the, the uh, Mastodon look like it's damaged. So <laughs> definitely recommend not doing that. And then the feet don't really move except maybe rotating like so. But, I mean, I don't know what you, why you would really want to do that except to show him, like, tap dancing or something. But the reason why I like this little guy so much is because of that. He's so little, and yet there's, like, a level of cuteness to the way that these pieces came together and assembled. Especially the way that these legs kind of form together and then spread apart to form the arms for the Megazord. I just, I, I love it. There's something design-wise about this little, uh, the black uh, Mastodon Zord that really won my heart over. There's the Sabertooth Tiger controlled by the Yellow Ranger, Kim, an Asian woman. Again, no subtlety. Anyways, I think on a figure level, not so much design-wise, but more as to how they feel like an actual figure, this would be my favorite. So it's kind of like a tie between the Mastodon because of how cute and tiny it is. And then the Sabertooth Tiger only because it feels like a legitimate figure because not only is this probably the most to scale of the of the figures, uh, of course, you know, Mastodon, it's a little bit like, ooh, why is it so tiny? But the Sabertooth Tiger is the one that actually has a, a, not only a level of functionality to it, but it also looks like a full-on figure. It doesn't feel like it's part of a set. It feels like something that could come packaged by its, itself, especially the way it feels and the way it's kind of put together and, and all the pieces kind of flushed into place. It's a pretty good, nice little Zord. Articulation-wise, all of the legs can actually function on this little guy. Or gal. At least, I'm assuming it is. Oh god, what is that? All of the legs on the Sabertooth Tiger, even the teeth, can actually move about. So, that's interesting. The head can move upwards, but that's primarily because of the transformation later on. So, it doesn't really count. Although, it does have a secondary uh, joint there at the top of the neck so there is that to consider and then the tail can actually move upwards and downwards but again that's primarily there for the transformation so we'll focus on that later on and it does come with articulation here in the back of the legs so that's safety not only can it move forwards for the transformation but also backwards ever so slightly so I'm like okay this is probably one of the few fully functioning zords amongst the set not only that, but you also got some nifty little uh, de de details. Like, for example, these wheels at the front, at the top of the front arms can actually rotate. Now, why in the hell are these tires able to rotate, but not these here in the back? I mean, th this one is, sure, but not this one. They made me go ahead and make a fake-ass tire here in the back by putting stickers on it. Stickers which have come off. And I guess I'll use this opportunity to mention one of my biggest gripes with the figure are those stickers. The, the stickers are a little troublesome not completely because ever so often there's that one sticker that flushes into place just so satisfyingly that it's like oh it like satisfies my OCD and it's perfect but there's that's only half of the time the other half of the time there are some stickers that either I don't think should have been made they either should have been just a paint job or should have just left well enough alone or the stickers are just a fucking nightmare to put on. A good example is actually on both the Mastodon and the the Triceratops. I don't know if you can really tell, but the eyes are actually a little off on both of these figures because they are a humongous bitch to put on. They're so tiny that A, again, I question why they were 
stickers in the first place. They should have just been painted onto the pieces. And B, they're just so tiny that trying to get the tiny little... Those green... The green eyes on the Mastodon head. Those are stickers. And it took me forever to put on. But like I said, ever so often it would be that satisfying sticker. Right here on the side of the ears for the Mastodon. Those stickers to put on there. Those were great to put on because they flushed right into place. They haven't come off. The, st the residue has actually stuck. The adhesive has actually stuck to the piece. Hasn't damaged it so far. So... It's kind of a hit and miss when it came to the stickers. And then finally, we got the Red Rangers T-Rex. Again, a little iffy on the scale because I imagine this guy's just a little bit tinier. But then again, T-Rexes are not supposed to be that big. Uh, I mean, to a human, they are big. But compared to other animals in the well, animal and di uh, dinosaur kingdom, he wasn't exactly the biggest per se. He was just the one that just never gave up. So here we have the T-Rex, again, considering that this is not only a model kit, but also a miniaturized version of the Megazord. You're not going to find a whole lot of impeccable detail. Uh, looking at the head here, there's some gaps where you can kind of tell where the ro the standard Megazord robot head is going to come in, and the T-Rex the head kind of ends, so spoilers. <laughs> the uh, arms are super tiny, which comes with the territory of being a T-Rex, but they're also not very articulated. you just got one joint there. And that's primarily to move the arms out of the way when you transform it. Um, nothing really else except for maybe one, actually, yeah, one joint right there in the waist where he can turn like so. So that's pretty cool. And it's going to come very, very much in handy when you transform it into the Megazord. And then most importantly would probably be the ball joints on his legs that are actually rather, ra rather inclusive and rather useful. Because you got a ball joint here at the top of both legs. And then you got the joint here at the knee which is going to come very, very much in handy during the transformation. And also to uh, to pose the T-Rex in general. On top of that, you also got a ball joint where he's at the ankle where he's able to pivot left and right and up and down. So positioning the T-Rex is actually one of the easiest figures to kind of like function and to kind of move around and get him in a variety of poses. So with that said, let's go ahead and transform these bad boys and bad girls to the almighty Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Megazord. Now, I wasn't originally going to do this, to be completely and brutally honest, but it's kind of, it kind of happens already in the process of getting to the Megazord mode. So let's take these guys and put them together to form the tank mode. Because God almighty, I have to be a proper reviewer and showcase every aspect of the thing that I'm reviewing. So we have to do the goddamn tank mode first of all there's three zords in the set that are very very easy to just transform right into where they need to be uh to form ugh, the tank mode first let's take billy here simply just take the tail fold it up like so and just flush it with the rest of the with the rest of the figure and then i already did this for reviewing purposes but here in the back, you're going to see this peg kind of protruding out. That's actually usually hidden away. When you put the figure together and you follow the instructions properly and all that, this peg is actually facing inwards. So you're going to have to reach in there, pull it out, fold out the peg, and then just flush this back in. It's actually a rather bit of a bitch to try to do that. So what I did is actually I separated these two pieces together, pulled that out to with the space that I was given, and then just pop everything back into place. That's it for, for uh, Triceratops. Moving on to Pterodactyl, simply remove these cannons here, like so. Take the wings, fold them in, and that's it, for now at least. Then we take Sabertooth Tiger, gonna move Mastodon here at the back. Sabertooth Tiger, take the front two arms or paws or whatever you prefer to call them at the time. Fold them upwards like it's ready to take off and fly. Uh, the instructions say to do this. Honestly, I don't think it really matters, but I'm just going to do it for formality's sake. But take the fangs and then flip them upwards like this. That way they can kind of... No, not that. They can kind of resemble the Triceratops a little bit more, I guess. Especially later on when they become the feet. Then, one of the more satisfying transformations. You take these back legs, flip them up, and just flush them in. To the rest of the body and that's when these wheels come in handy because then these wheels can actually function at least these right here not the fake ass wheels that they make me do over here which by the way 
they this goes into my complaint where I said that some pieces just didn't uh, some pieces of stickers didn't need to be stickers they needed to be painted pieces of the plastic they made me take this like little strip of black uh, of a black sticker and just put it right there to make it seem like the tire and iterator came off I lost it and to be quite frank I don't give a shit because I'm like let's make that a wheel anyways take this one fold it upwards and as you can see I think saber tooth tiger is a dude <laughs> and again. To reiterate, just like I did with Triceratops, this pig, oh my god, this pig is actually inside, it's a hum humongous, frustrating hassle to try to get it out of here. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> this, I'm doing, this is, this is what Bandai is making me do. But you take this peg, you fold it out, and you, you press this back in, but to save time, I already did it ahead of time, because it's, it's terrible to do. And like I said, to, uh, using a shortcut that could be considered frowned upon, I simply just take it took these two pieces, separated them to create a space, pull this out, and then just pop these two back into place where they were. And as you saw right there, just take the t tail and then fold it forwards. And take that back joint, you press it upwards as long as that separate peg is facing outwards like so. And that one's ready. Alright, the next one is actually going to be the T-Rex. Because I think it will be best suited if we do that one first. So... Basically, rather simple. Uh, I have to remember that I'm doing the tank mode first. <laughs> Anyways, take the legs and kind of flush them in like this. And then just have them facing like about yay angle. Right about right there. So do the same thing with the other one. Just take it, flush it in, make sure that those... Those holes that you see at the knees need to be facing forward. You just do this right here, like it's squatting. It's about to take a poop. And then you just take the tail and then kind of rotate it upwards so that everything is just completely flushed like this, like that. And then take the arms and then just fold them up. And then that's really about it. There you go. <laughs> Poor T-Rex. He has to be made smaller than he already is. It's disrespectful. With Mastodon, it's where all the fun kind of comes into play. And you start to kind of see things uh, start to take shape. So with Mastodon, you just remove the head. I know, rather morbid, but it has to be done. There we go. Remove the head, set it to the side. Then you take this guy. And this is where that transformation that's just so satisfying uh, happens pretty much. Basically, you take these back legs, you fold them upwards like this, and then just rotate everything out like that. And then you just take the two, rotate it outwards. They're on panels, and those panels are going to come apart like this. And then there you go. So now we take this guy, since we already have it in our hands here. We have two pegs right here. We're going to take T-Rex. And on the back of T-Rex, he's got those two holes right there. So guess where this is going to go? Right here on the back. Like this. And then we just take the two arms, or at least what are going to be arms. Have a hole right there. Goes into that peg right there. Like that. Do the same thing over here. Oh, there we go. And then simply just make sure that this is all facing forwards like this there you go like i said i have to remind myself we're doing the goddamn tank mode first goddamn goddamn <laughs> and i think we can actually take these panels and fold them outwards at least for now at least give them some dignity right so let's do that okay then we take these two cannons that we took off pterodactyl got the peg right there goes into the mastodon hands oh feet at least right here to the holes that are inside of his hands or inside of his arms or paws whatever the f oh anyways there you go so i want to say we're about halfway there then comes up uh, i think one of the easiest things take pterodactyl it's got a piece right here that has two grooves right about right there gonna flush rather rather well with those two tabs that are right there so you just take it flush it in sure it's lined up well 
There you go. And she's done. Then you take basically these two that are going to be the legs later on. And you just take those pegs and put them into the knee holes. <laughs> but basically just take them, put them into the knee holes like so. Oop, knocked over belly. Like that. And pop into place. She's set. Let me just take Billy, do the exact same thing. Like that. And then, Jesus Christ almighty. <laughs> this this thing. All right, flush it into place. Make sure that those wheels are on the right spot. And look at that, one of the stickers already came out. Like I said, these stickers are very hit and miss. Let's just put that bad boy back on. There you go. Let's hope to God it stays for a good amount of time at least. And then the last finishing touch on the tank mode is the elephant head. So basically what you do is you reach in here. You pull out this little piece here and it has a peg. It has both a square peg and a circular peg. The square peg is going to come in handy later. Right now let's worry about the circle, circular peg. Circular peg. Just make sure it's uh, facing outwards like that. All right. And basically what you're going to do... Is that you're gonna reach in here pull out this piece right here that's part of the chest piece pull it out in the back here using your finger you press that red peg it's gonna pop out this piece right here that was in the center now you got a hollow space so you take this out and you simply just put the elephant head right there make sure it's going in right up oh, see there we go. And you just make sure that's like that. There you go. And then we just take the chest piece, pop it back in. Okay. Is it is it flushing? Is it flushing? It's very tricky, but as long as you flush it and everything's going well, there you go. And I believe we have our monstrosity of a tank mode. And let me just focus on that a little better. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so there we have the tank mode. And I fucking hate it. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I, I hate this thing. I really do hate this thing. Um, there might have been a couple of steps that I missed, but overall, that's that I might have missed, uh, either missed or I messed up. I, I honestly don't care at this point because I hate this mode. Not only do I hate it for the figure, I hated it for the show itself. I, even as a kid, I would look at it and I'm like, why are they just, you know, m morphed together, in no pun intended, in that way? It makes no logical sense. Just form the goddamn Megazord. Just do it. Just do it. And that's precisely what we're going to exactly do right now. On a much lighter note, it's actually easier to get to the Megazord mode from this point. So let's take a uh, pterodactyl off, set it to the side. And then basically what we're going to do is take the tail here, take the T-Rex tail, fold it up. And there's actually a peg on the tail here, right there. It's going to go inside a hole in there. So you just take it. Pop it in, make sure it's flushed into place. You just take the tail and just flip it down like that, making sure it doesn't come off again. All right. So now the easiest part and the most satisfying part to get rid of this monstrosity is to take the legs and then just fold them down like that. There we go. That feels a little bit better. Then you just take the heads of the bottom two zords and just flip them up like that that and of course with the saber tooth tiger you just got to take the arms and flip them upwards like this to kind of get them out of the way make sure all this is flushed and there you go you can already see the megazord coming together and thank god because we seriously needed to get away from this stupid tank mode and there you go now it's time to tilt the camera up there you go now we take the arms rotate them downwards like that, kind of get them where they're supposed to be. Then remove the hand cannons here that we put underneath the Mastodon's paws. And then we're going to take said paws and then rotate them around to bring out the Megazord hands. This one's a little tricky because that one of the pieces there in the back can kind of get in the way. Let's do the same thing with this one. Rotate it around. 
There you go. Now we got the Megazord hands out and about. Then let's go ahead and remove this chest piece like we did before. And I don't know if you were able to tell right there, but now you got a hollow spot here in the chest. What you're gonna do is that originally there was this piece right here at the top of the chest. We're gonna remove it, set it to the side. We're gonna remove the Mastodon head from the chest. We're gonna take that piece that we removed with our finger and put it back where it was, like that. Then we take the Mastodon head and actually we just flip it out, the, the little piece here outwards most so that the square peg is, is exposed. And we're gonna take that square peg and put it into one of the hands. I prefer to go with the left one because the hands have a, a square peg built within, within it. So we just take that piece and just pop it in. See if we get this working. There we go. And we're done with that. So he kind of uses the Mastodon head as, as a form of mace. And then, and this might come as a shock to you, but you're going to take the T-Rex head and simply just pop it off like that. It's very loosely put on the robot head, so it's not really that difficult to, to take off. You just take the T-Rex head, put it inside of the chest along with this piece that came off that chest piece that was covering up the bottom portion of the face. So you just take this, store it inside. It doesn't really matter how to be honest, because it's just going to be bouncing back and forth in there. So just make sure it's in there and it's flushed completely down with nothing really obstructing it. And you just take the chest piece, flush it back into place, and it should just fit rather snugly like that. There you go. Now we take the two horns of the robot head and just move them forward like that. There you go. He's almost done. We go in the back over here. You see those two holes that were on the Mastodon's feet? We take the two cannons, put them in there. Oh, God. There you go. We take them forwards, and then the finishing touch, we take Pterodactyl, fold out the wings, take the head, and there goes the sticker again. Take the head, Flush it inside, press it inside, hide it away, take the, the wings, fold them back into place like they were, and then those two pegs right there, kind of go into two holes right here. And there we have Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Miniature Megazord. Looking pretty, pretty badass, especially for the size and for the value. And of course, he's not complete really until you give him his sword. Comes bundled in with the package, slide it in right there. There you go. Pretty cool. He measures at about six inches. He's got all the nifty little details that you would expect from the Megazord and more. And he comes with the basic uh, functionality when it comes to articulation. You got the joints that there at the top of the arm. It could bend at the elbow and also rotate right there at the bicep, which is rather incredible because the to, to put this joint together when you're putting the pieces together, it's rather t uh, slightly tumultuous and... Uh, a pain in the ass, but it's worth it. When you see the work they get there, you're like, wow, this is how it's made. The hands can rotate 360 degrees. Um, no articulated fingers, so that's a slight bummer. The head can rotate 360 degrees, but can't really move up and down, so there is that. There is that waist joint that I showed you earlier, but there is going to be a, some slight obstruction there. And then, of course, pretty much all of the joints that were in the knees and the legs of the T-Rex are uh, is shown off here, so that's pretty cool. Now, I want to see if maybe I could do this, although there might not be enough time because this really is another um, lingering functionality that is just terrible to really do on camera. But there is an extra point of articulation here in the ankle with this piece here. Basically, what you do is you take off this piece like so, separate it from the leg, and then inside... I don't know if you could see it. In there is actually a joint, a ball joint that you can flip out and put inside right there. And you can actually give the feet here ball joints to be able to pivot up, down, left, and right. So that's pretty cool. Not going to do it right now only for time's sake because I know it's going to take forever to take out. I'm going to need like, the, not even the sword does a good job. We're going to have to like separate the pieces, take it out and then put it back together and I'm sorry I just didn't plan ahead of time for that one unfortunately but still it's cool that 
you're building a figure that has all this functionality and you don't even know it. And that's pretty cool. Again, it does have its fair share of issues when it comes to some of the stickers that either aren't necessary or just are, are a pain in the ass. But more importantly, I think another little issue that arose as I was transforming it, it's not so much a problem now, but because of how the pieces come in the package, like I showed you at the very beginning of the video, they have, I don't know, this is a good example right here. They have these pieces where they're, uh, they still have that piece that used to be attached to the tray so that when you tear it away, it has this little like piece sticking out. It's it, I've, I don't want to call it residue, but it kind of sort of is. And sometimes that could prove to be a problem when you're either assembling pieces together or when you're simply just positioning them or moving them about when you're transforming the figure from the individual Zords to the Megazord. And that could be a problem, not only because it obstructs other pieces from flushing together, but also it, it can cause injuries because I have had a fair share of uh, puncture wounds here in my fingers from trying to transform this motherfucker. And that's because there were pieces here that were sticking out and were not only damaging me, but potentially dam damaging the figure. So I think you should tread carefully with that should you decide to purchase this figure and build it yourself because... Uh, you have to be very meticulous and very careful, especially with these things kind of sticking out. And that's a hazard that came with the territory of getting a getting a, a model kit. But if you're already familiar with model kits this way, then, hey, have at it. Overall, I'm very surprised with the figure. He kind of reminds me of why I love Transformers, where you got... I, I practically got like four figures here. I got the robot. I got the... Well, three figures. The robot, the individual swords, the transformation, which is almost like a puzzle piece... And then I guess you could argue a fourth figure, which was the the building of it, building the figure, getting to, through the steps. You know, every day when I had time, I was like, oh, I'm going to put together that Zord and then play around with it. And then finally transform the Mega Zord at the end. It was a rather interesting journey to get to this point. And I'm really happy that only 60 bucks got me this. So if you're willing to get through some of the small hurdles of applying the stickers or some of these pieces that are sticking out from the trays that you tear them away from, I think that if you are a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fan and you missed out on that very expensive, like $130, $150 uh, Megazord, then head on over to either Big Bad Toy Store or maybe Sideshow or any other online retailer and pick this guy up. He's only 60 bucks, And if you have enough patience but you love putting these things together and transforming them and playing around with them, then it's really as well worth your money. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys thought of the review. Uh, are you guys willing to pick this guy up? Do you think that he doesn't appeal to you? Let me know all, your, all of your thoughts. And go ahead and support the video by hitting the like and share button. This video has gone on for too long. I'm, I'm a little tired. Hitting the, hit the like and share. Make sure to comment and, of course, subscribe for more reviews, some of which might be figure reviews, coming very soon. Until next time, guys. See you later. It's really obvious in certain scenes. You can actually go on YouTube right now and look up a clip that's a conversation between Bruce Wayne and Aquaman, and the green screen is completely obvious. And I don't know if they were really under the clock when it came to this, but man, another month, maybe as a Christmas release, they could have polished some of that stuff up because it's bad. It's very distracting.